Hello, welcome. Today we're gonna to be reading some entitled parent stories from Reddit. Let's go. I put vegetables in all my food so my roommate's kid won't eat them. The mum is upset. I posted this in another forum but received a lot of comments telling me to post it here as well. Uh, I'm guessing there was a AITA. I, 26F, uh, live in a rented house with a single mother, 30F, and her son, 6M. I had another person living with me, but they moved out and the mother moved in. I don't mind living with her and her kid. It's fine and we kind of do our own thing. I spend a lot of time at my boyfriend's place or working. Our work schedules collide, so we really don't interact much, but when we do, it's fine. No issue there. I want to start with saying that she clearly struggles financially, but I don't think it's an excuse. Uh, I don't make lots of money either. However, I've noticed that my food would go missing or portions would be taken from it. I assume it was her kid, so I asked her if she'd stop him from eating my food. I was calm about it and she just said she would. She wouldn't stop herself though. It didn't really upset me when it first started. It started getting annoying when I'd get home from work and expect to have a meal's worth of leftovers in the fridge only to see it picked through or just gone. I kept bringing it up and she started getting annoyed with me bringing it up. Imagine eating the food and then getting annoyed over it. This is just ridiculous. Just from observing them, I realized that neither of them ever eat vegetables. And judging by the food that would get picked through and the food that would be untouched, anything with green in it was avoided. They must be very healthy, huh? Orange chicken would be gone, but chicken and broccoli would be untouched. So I started putting vegetables in everything. I find vegetables to be delicious and anything green or not a potato does not get eaten. So I could mix some bell peppers into the food and it would be fine. I make a big portion of vegetables pretty frequently anyway, so I just started putting them in everything I eat. If I had leftover mashed potatoes, I'd pour green beans in and mix it up. If I had leftover cheesy bacon fries, I'd pour broccoli all over it and mix it in. Sounds like a, a great master plan. Usually my homemade stuff has vegetables in it, but I started making sure everything did. I made a pot of mac and cheese, the kid's favorite thing, and poured in roasted Brussels sprouts, which is actually delicious to me, and I'm eating more vegetables, so it's a win-win. She had been seeming annoyed, but we were all home when I made a pot of mac and cheese. She was in the living room and saw me get out the Brussels sprouts and was like, what are you going to do with that? And I poured them in. She said I was being greedy and annoying. I just said, I like Brussels sprouts, and that was it. She said, we need food. And I told her to go get some, or stop buying only prepackaged things, and your money will go further. I think she sees this as some big act of revenge, but I just simply want to be able to eat my food. Also, I want to add that the sharing is not the issue. It's expecting to have food there, and it's not. So often I'd be working a long day and get home expecting to have a meal's worth food and it'll all be gone. Or I wake up in a rush and had my food ready to eat in the morning only to find it gone. Uh, they have a ravenous appetite to eat everything in sight. It makes perfect sense that uh, she would put vegetables in everything. So now I have to skip breakfast. If she would simply text sometimes, hey, is it okay if we eat this? I would know and know to make other plans. I would stop for food or know I have to whip something up when I get home. Also, I think eating the last of someone else's food is crazy and rude. If someone makes a big pot of something and you ask for a serving, sure. But if someone made something and there is one serving left and you eat it without permission, that is evil as hell. I agree. This is absolutely insane. I don't understand how somebody could do that. Entitled parents moved my stuff at a beach, got ticketed for theft. It's gonna be interesting. Hi all, story that happened to me yesterday. I'm on a vacation at a touristy beach spot. Went out mid-morning to the beach before the crowd and set up my towel, umbrella, chair, cooler, etc. Around 11 a.m. while laying on my towel tanning with headphones in and I get a tap on my shoulder. 
opened my eyes to a middle-aged woman standing over me and her family and young kids starting to set up multiple umbrellas, chairs, toys, about 10 inches behind me. When I took my headphones out, the woman proceeds to tell me that my batting suit is inappropriate to be around her children and so I will need to move. Note, bathing suit is a cheeky bikini bottom but not a tong. I tell her I was there first, they can find somewhere else to set it up it if offends her. She proceeds to say, there is no other close spots to the water. I tell her I'm not moving and put my headphones back in. About an hour later I decided to hop in the water for a dip to cool off. While in the water I look at the shoreline and the woman has packed up my stuff with her husband and is carrying it away from the area, this is just insane. I hop out of the water and get a lifeguard to call beach security while I watch them walking my stuff up the beach to relocate it. Beach security and myself approach them. Then try to play dumb and say it's their stuff, so they are asked to open the wallet to show ID. Surprise, it's my ID. Cops are then called in and I choose to press charges for theft. And I got my spot back since the family was escorted slash kicked off the beach. Epic victory. That is just crazy. How would you react if somebody just came to you, just chilling at the beach? You need to move. I want to be here with my children. That is a total Karen move. Oh, this is a short one. My dad told me I was a failure as a man and as a son. Because I told him I wanted to go to Hawaii on vacation. I was expecting something like murder or something, but not a Hawaii vacation. So, back in October, I got a new job and when I got the job offer, I asked them what the latest possible start date was so that I may travel. They gave me a month, so I decided that I'll solo travel to Hawaii as I've always wanted to go my entire life. Well, when I told my dad I wanted to go, he immediately asked me when I was going to grow up and stop acting like a child. Never, that's the right answer. Be a child forever. Sure, you can do adult stuff, but uh, why would you kill your inner child makes no sense. That traveling is a dream only children have. He then told me I'm a failure as a man and as a son, because I wasn't married at 25 and haven't bought my parents a house. Mind you, my relationship with him is significantly better than it is with my mom. LOL. By the way, still went. Chad move. Of course you're gonna go. If you wanna travel, go travel. Don't let a bitter old man tell you what to do. Honestly, sounds like the dad needs to chill out a little and start acting more like a child. It would be really good for his psych. Parents putting their kids on our motorcycle to take pics without consent. My husband and I live in a region with a lot of tourism and we own a rare motorcycle. How do you like my female voice, by the way? It's a very valuable old timer my husband spent a fortune for to restore. We're living on the countryside, but when we're going on day trips, it happens that we park our bike in more busy places when taking a break for lunch or coffee. I understand that motorbike draws attention and that some people snap pics of it, but we increasingly have to deal with parents who randomly put their kids on it to do so. Interesting. I don't understand how people don't get that that's rude, it's a personal possession of these people. You can't just touch it or use it. Last weekend we stopped a couple who was just about to do it and they gave us the usual excuse. Uh, we would have asked, but nobody was around. Just like not being around makes our bike public property. Minutes later, after just ordering food, we caught another couple swinging their kid's bum on the seat of our bike. This time it wasn't just a toddler, but an at least six-year-old boy. We received a lot of feedback also from not entitled parents to call the police or make a big scene, but frankly, it has become so frequent we just decided to avoid such places, because we grew tired of seeing toddlers kicking the tank or mothers pulling the zippers of their handbags along it by hauling their offspring up and down. Ten years ago this rarely ever happened. We can tell the entitlement intensifies. Yeah, I believe the entitlement surely did intensify in the last ten years. These people are acting like everything is public property. Just ask. And if no one is around, just keep walking. It's not your bike. 
Okay, we've got a quite intense one. It's not even a stepmother, it's a step monster tried to kidnap me and my sister for Christmas. This happened in 2009, when I was 15 and my sister was 11. I honestly don't remember it well, I had to call my mother to fill me in on some details, and it helped a little. My parents got divorced when I was 10. My mother got primary custody, but we stayed with my father for about 3 days a week, sometimes more. They took turns celebrating the holidays with us, we'd spend them with one parent in one year and with the other one in the next. In March 2009, my father and his then-girlfriend Molly broke up after he confessed to cheating with the woman that eventually became SM. Years later, I found out that affair had been going on for almost two years by the time he told Molly. He introduced SM to us in May, on my birthday actually, and they almost immediately announced their engagement. From that moment, she started trying to force us all to be a happy, blended family. Yeah, that's not how it works. Which usually meant forcing us to do everything she or sometimes my stepbrother wanted and pretending my mom wasn't in the picture. SM and my dad started pushing her to leave us with them a lot more often than my parents had previously agreed. But she thankfully wouldn't budge. We started getting ready for the holidays in November, and SM started talking about a ski resort, hotel, question mark, I don't know, it was 14 years ago, that she wanted to visit with us. It was a 3 hour car drive from where we lived, and was clearly more suited for couples, younger children or the elderly. Neither me or my sister uh, actually wanted to go, but before we could say that, SM asked us but we'd be done with school so that she could book it for a that is a long f sentence goddamn so that she could book it for a two week trip during our winter break whatever that means I can't even read that I was happy to be the one to break it to her we'd spend Christmas and New Year's Day with my father and Molly the year before so it was my mom's turn to have us my father and SM called my mother dozens of times to try to convince her to let them take us, insisting that SM was excited to spend Christmas with us and that the previous year's holiday didn't count. Because we'd spend time with Molly. My mom said no and she'd already made plans and the subject was dropped for a few weeks. Then, on our last day of school before winter break, SM picked me and my sister up from our schools. That was fine. We were supposed to spend a couple days with my father before the holidays. What wasn't fine was that the moment we got into her car, SM said, We're going to the ski resort. Surprise. May as well say, uh, we murdered your mother. Don't worry about it. She proceeded to tell us that they'd already packed our bags for us and dad would meet us there. I asked if my mom knew about this and she said, sure. But I knew that was a lie. I also didn't believe her when she said we'd only be there for a couple of days and would be back before Christmas. I figured they'd book the two week stay they wanted and would probably guilt trip us both into staying once their couple of days were up. I was terrified. I didn't have a phone. My mom thought I was still too young to have one. Didn't trust SM and I could see my sister was even more scared. I told SM we didn't want to go. She said, fine. Let's just pick up stepbrother from school. We picked him up from school, SM said, Okay, now let's go to the resort. I said again that we didn't want to go. She said, fine, let's just find a gas station and fill up. That pattern repeated itself about six times over the next hour. Every time I said we didn't want to go, SM would make up an excuse and pretend to forget my plea. As we were about to leave town, my dad called SM. I heard them fight for a few minutes about something and then she hung up. Stepbrother asked what happened, but she didn't answer. Then she said, I'm taking you kids to your mom's. <laughs> oh my god, what a weird situation. Looks like she did this alone without the consent of dad. What a psycho bitch. She turned the car around and took us home. When we got there, my mom pulled us out of the car and screamed at SM to leave, which she did. My mom was hugging us and bawling as if she hadn't seen us in years. She didn't tell me the full story until a few days later. 
Basically, my mom called my dad in panic because he'd never told her we'd gotten home. Which he always did whenever he picked us up from school. He was hoping she wouldn't call until we were already at the resort. My father knew that lying would do more harm than good, so he told her their plans. F Looks like they planned this together, after all. He tried to spin it around as something my sister wanted, but mother didn't bite. She told him that if SM didn't take us back to her place, she'd call the police. My father and SM took my stepbrother to the resort. For a few months after, they bragged about all the fun they had and all the things me and my sister had missed. Stepbrother later confined in me that he actually hated it. He barely saw his mom while they were there and he spent Christmas mostly alone in their room. SM called us both selfish for trying to ruin their holidays. My sister actually felt guilty for a while and I had to reassure her. Yeah, I think step monster really fits her. My mom didn't call the cops or press charges. At the time, she didn't know if what SM did would qualify as a crime or if they would actually help. She also feared that would ruin our relationship with my father, with whom she is still trying to stay on amicable terms. Years later, she told me she regretted not calling anyone. And that's the story of how I got my first phone. <laughs> okay. For some reason, I really hate this story. So much that I avoid talking about it. This text was actually on my drafts for almost a week. It's far from the worst thing SM has ever done. Ugh. But it still pisses me off. I admit that writing it all down did help a little though. Well yeah, I mean, this definitely seems like a traumatizing story. It makes sense that uh, you don't want to talk about it. And if you've enjoyed these Entitled Parents Reddit stories, comment, like, share, subscribe, click the notifications button next to the subscribe button to get notified whenever I upload. See you in the next one. Peace out.